Okay, yeah, I'll move I'll start off with uh the week the our weekly update. Um uh, for our weekly update, uh, the first point is basically our STI target is unchanged, uh, 3270. Uh in terms of the macro highlights, uh as you can as the main highlight last month, uh last week, sorry, was the Fed minutes. Uh, that kind of confirmed that uh, we should expect uh, the, the balance sheet to tapering uh, to begin uh, uh, in the next Fed meeting on 19th to 20th of September. Uh, the, another event next week, uh, this week will be the Jackson Hall Central Bank meeting. Uh, the, the Fed chair will probably reaffirm that the balance, the balance sheet tapering will, will occur in the, uh, in the September month, uh, next month. Um, um, uh, a major macro uh, data point uh, was the electronics exports uh, it remains uh, very uh, robust, uh, especially semiconductor sales, uh, which continue to accelerate and uh, and we, and we, these are levels not seen uh, for the past six to seven years. Uh, in terms of U.S. data, just a quick note: uh, the, the data points are actually quite mixed. Uh, we've got big auto and loans. Uh, other parts are are pretty stable. Uh, in terms of our stock strategy, uh, we maintain a sustainable yield and we are above it a property for uh, for momentum. Uh, no change in our stock picks, Asian Pay TV, CCT, Mint, and, and so forth. Uh, others, of, of course, uh, in particular, would be our recent uh, initiation of our Banyan tree. In terms of sector updates for Singapore, uh, for construction, uh, the, it remains in the, in the major doldrums. Uh, the most recent June number quarter, we saw a 30% slight uh, decline in contracts awarded. For the whole of uh, first half of 17, we have seen uh, contracts collapse almost 40%. I think a lot of a more the source of the decline comes from public contracts. Uh, we've, we've, we've declined almost 50% year over year. I think a lot of major public contracts have been uh, pushed forward. Uh, re retail sales may, may remain sluggish, maybe between the 1% to 2%. Uh, in terms of property in Singapore, uh, the sales momentum remains healthy. Uh, the recent July sales, we saw a 13% jump in, uh, in, in, in sales to 3,000 units. Uh, here, we are referring to primary and secondary. Uh, this is the second highest number for 2017. Uh, more notable is that uh, uh, the 3,000 is actually double the average monthly sales that we've seen in 2014 to 2016, which is about 1,400 units per month. Uh, that's me. That's it for me here, Paul. Uh, I'll move on to Richard. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we published a sector report on industrial REITs last Friday, so I'll walk you through some of the highlights from the result from the report. So first thing, uh, we are maintaining our eco-weight view on industrial REITs. Uh, the oversupply situation is abating and we believe rents to bottom by end of uh, 2018. However, occupancy has not picked up uh, this despite the higher industrial activity that we see in the first half of this year. Uh, we have a top-down strategy of buying REITs that are positioned to benefit from the shift towards higher value added manufacturing and Ascenders REIT and Maple Tree Industrial Trust are our favourites. We also have a bottom-up special situation pick, uh, that's a, we have a trading buy on Sabana REIT. This slide shows uh, the JTC data that was uh, published recently for second quarter of this year. What you can see is uh, mostly rental and occupancy is down for uh, in the aggregate industrial space, both quarter on quarter and year on year. The only bright spark is a business park where you can see um, rental is higher quarter on quarter, year on year, and so is um, the occupancy for business park. This slide shows the key takeaways from the quarter. This is uh, what we see in the results and uh, some of the things that the managers are saying. So first thing is uh, negative reversions to persist in second half of this year. The read managers are still cautioning for this. Uh, we look at some of the reversions for 
the REITs under our coverage. So for Ascenders, you can see it's a positive 1.1, Maple Tree, negative 2, Soybean REIT, negative 9.8, and Cash, uh, minus 20%. So there are a few one-offs uh, and outliers here. So that's for Cash, that's uh, just a, it's an outlier renewal for uh, only one tenant. Uh, this uh, Ascenders REIT, there's a positive 1.1. If you refer to the report, uh, we mentioned that there's, it's a first cycle renewal for a period. So a period is a new property and they are now undergoing their first cycle renewal. So when it was new, it was a vacant and it doesn't have a proven track record. So uh, the rent for that was uh, lower than normal. And now that um, during the first renewal cycle, rents were the reversions are actually positive, high, they are high positive, and that has uh, lifted up the portfolio average to 1.1. But if you exclude this um, one-off effect, then uh, uh, portfolio reversion will actually be a negative number. The other thing is uh, we hear from the uh, managers is that leasing inquiries have picked up, uh, but it's still a tenant's market. That's because of the oversupply. So they are hearing more inquiries uh, compared to a year ago and also compared to a quarter ago, uh, but their priority remains on tenant retention and uh, maintaining occupancy. We also want to highlight now uh, that a decline in rents during 2017 will actually negatively impact the year-end uh, property valuations. So that has already started to happen for Sabana REIT. Uh, for 2Q, the portfolio was revalued down uh, by 28 million uh, down to 964 million and that caused its aggregate leverage uh, to go up from 36.1% to 37%. So at this point, uh, we'll be uh, cautious over those portfolios where there's significant master lease expiries uh, in the second half of this year and that will be um, AA REIT, that's AIMS AMP Capital Industrial REIT and uh, Sabana REIT. So for AA REIT, there's a 7.5% of gross rental income, which is a master lease that are expiring later this year. And for Sabana, it's a 22.6% by net letable area, which is on master lease and expiring uh, later this in the later part of this year. So there, when master leases expire, there's a high chance that uh, property net property income will become lower and this uh, would have the effect of uh, lowering the property valuation and then um, aggregate leverage will increase because existing debt is uh, across a smaller asset base. The other significant development that happened also was uh, another oil and gas tenant defaulted during the quarter. So Talus Marine uh, defaulted at ESR REIT and they consolidated their operations to their existing property in the soybean REIT portfolio. Investment actions, we are maintaining equal weight uh, view on industrial REIT subsector. Tailwinds are uh, tapering of supply in 2018 and we also see an uptick in industrial activity in the first half of this year. However, the headwinds are that uh, occupancy is still lower. That's in spite of uh, the higher industrial activity and also negative rental reversions are expected to continue in the second half of this year. With the recent run out in prices, uh, we believe that positive expectations have already been factored in and now greater probability for disappointment rather than a positive surprise. So uh, we would like to see occupancy improve in order to upgrade our sector view. In this table here, uh, you can see that we still have uh, two accumulates for industrial REITs, that's Ascenders REIT and Maple Tree Industrial Trust. Uh, for Ascenders, target price is 286. Uh, this is the last close price on Thursday. And uh, for Maple Tree Industrial, target price is uh, 198. This is uh, the last close price on Thursday. So I'll talk a bit more about our top-down view. Uh, our strategy is to maintain exposure to business and science park properties and uh, high tech and high specs buildings. So Singapore is evolving towards higher value added manufacturing and also there's a push for the Smart Nation initiative. So we like REITs that can capture this opportunity through 
uh, their holdings in this type of buildings in their portfolio. So for Ascenders REIT, 57% uh, of its uh, net property income comes from their business parks and science park and high tech, high specs properties in Singapore. And their sponsor, Ascenders Singh Bridge, has a pipeline of uh, about one more than one billion uh, worth of business park properties for injection into their portfolio. Ascenders uh, aggregate leverage of uh, 34% is lower than the sector median. Next is uh, Maple Tree Industrial Trust. So Maple Tree Industrial Trust has a strategy of growing their high-tech building segment. Uh, recently completed in June was their Hewlett Packard Build to Suit project. And other ongoing uh, projects is the development of this 14-story high-tech building at Kalang and uh, built to suit a six-story data center in the west region of Singapore, which is expected to complete in the second half of uh, this second half of 2018. Uh, the manager for Maple Tree Industrial Trust uh, for a few quarters has been saying that this is where they are going to build a portfolio for uh, high-tech buildings and specifically they are looking to uh, add on more data center into their portfolio. For Maple Tree Industrial Trust, their aggregate leverage is 29.8% uh, and it's one of the lowest within the s universe. For bottom-up uh, special situation, uh, we have the consolidation thesis for Sabana Reed where it's a possible acquisition of their assets either by Yishang Redwood or by ESR REIT. So in the meantime, it's a high yield offering 7.3% uh, with a free call option if it gets acquired. So there's a minimal risk of unit holder dilution this year because the manager did not secure a general mandate. So the manager is not issuing any new units uh, for payment of his fees, neither can the manager uh, do uh, placement of uh, new units. So the remaining risk for DPU to maintain in the second half of this year is uh, all uh, boils down to the portfolio, which is the uh, occupancy level that they can maintain, uh, master lease conversions, and uh, the effect of negative reversions in the second half of this year. And of course, the key risk to the event-driven thesis is the sale of assets uh, does not materialize. So at the same time, uh, we look at what ESR REIT is doing, and it appears that it's building up its war chest. Uh, they have already proposed the divestment of three non-core properties, and did not make any announcement for any proposed acquisition. So it looks like they are uh, trying to raise capital for uh, an acquisition. They also have switched on their uh, DRP, that's the uh, distribution reinvestment uh, plan. And the last time this was, uh, switched on was in the fourth quarter 2015 distribution. These two charts uh, are showing for the overall industrial sector. This is the data from JTC. What you see here is um, there's a negative surprise with the dip in occupancy after it has stabilized. So this came as a negative surprise, uh, but rental index has stabilized. This is the chart for factory space. We'll look at the multi-user um, data. So we can see that occupancy also came down and uh, it's made a new low, but at the same time rental index has stabilized. For business park-wise, you can see that occupancy has been going up and uh, rental index has also stabilized. Warehouse, similar to the aggregate sector as well as factory, the Occupancy has gone down and made a new low as well, while rental index has stabilized. So overall, you can see that uh, rental is stabilizing, whereas occupancy is coming down. Here, this chart shows that uh, 1.4 million square meters of space is coming on stream in second half 2017, but this uh, supply is tapering off in 2018 onwards. This chart shows the uh, difference between the amount of new space that was added in the first half of this year compared to uh, what's coming out in the second half of this year. And you can see that 
uh, generally there's a lot more space, new space coming out in the second half of this year uh, compared to the first half. Likewise, same uh, as previous uh, quarters, there's no new supply of business park uh, space for the remainder of 2017. Now we look at some of the manufacturing indicators. So first on the left is a PMI and electronics PMI. Uh, you see that electronics PMI is actually uh, leading the charge and is uh, a lot higher than the PMI. Right chart shows industrial production. It's also been uh, on uptrend for um, since late part of last year. Uh, and it's moderating. You notice here this um, this 22.4% year-on-year growth happened in December 2016. We don't expect it to repeat again in any of the months um, such a high year-on-year -year growth because probably um, the corresponding point here a year ago came from a low base and that's how it became a, uh, such a significant jump in industrial production for that month, but uh, going forward probably will not be able to see any uh, growth in the 20% region. So as I showed just now, some of the charts for uh, occupancy wise, uh, it was a negative surprise in spite of the uh, strong manufacturing indicators. Um, but we don't think it's a concern for now as uh, occupancy usually lacks activity. Uh, but we do highlight that upcom upcoming new supply is still higher than historical supply. And at the same time, demand is still lower than historical demand. So there's still an uh, ongoing uh, demand supply imbalance. For multi-user factory wise, and warehouse is almost the same. Uh, 27, second half of this year, um, is uh, still going to be uh, quite bad in terms of oversupply. Uh, for both of them, we think that revergence will be between the negative low teens to high single digit. Um, going forward for factory space, uh, we think that some new supply from this uh, high-tech and high-spec style of building will come from AEIs to upgrade existing properties as well as, well as built to suit projects. Uh, warehouse wise uh, going forward new demand probably will come from e-commerce for business part uh, is the most stable among the other types of industrial space because of the limited supply but upside in rents is also kept because it needs to remain competitive and maintain the rental differential with office space This is a summary of uh, the results for this quarter for the various industrial REITs. So as usual, gross revenue, uh, most significant gross revenue growth comes from inorganic growth and uh, some of it comes from organic growth. So for acquisitions wise, this was at uh, Ascender Street, Maple Tree Logistics Trust, Capital DC REIT and Viva Industrial Trust. Organic growth was uh, Maple Tree Industrial Trust, AA REIT, and again uh, Viva Industrial Trust. Two of the REITs had lower year-on-year -year DPU despite gross revenue growth. This was um, AA REIT and Soybuilt REIT. So for AA REIT, there was conversions from master lease to multi-tenancy, and for Soybuilt, uh, there was uh, this uh, effect of uh, one for ten preferential offering. This table here shows uh, the valuation, relative valuation among the sector and all these tables behind are the historical ones going back uh, each time going uh, three months back in time. So you can see that there's actually a trend of um, compressing use and valuations are getting richer across these uh, last 12 months.
this uh, comparison uh, com of relative valuation from three months ago and uh, now. So not much change in that the four largest market capitalized REITs are still at the bottom right corner here where um, investors are paying a premium for them and their yields are the uh, lowest. So as a recap, uh, we are maintaining equal weight view on industrial REITs. There's a tapering of supply in 2018, uh, but we would like to see occupancy improve in order to upgrade our sector view. In the meanwhile, strategic top-down view um, is to get exposure to REITs with business and science park properties and high-tech, high-specs buildings as uh, this can capture uh, the evolution towards higher value added manufacturing. So we have Ascenders Reed and Maple Tree Industrial Trust both on Accumulate. And for our bottom-up special situation is a consolidation thesis for Sabana Reed where there's a possible acquisition of its assets either by Yishang Redwood or ESR Reed. Now we'll move on to results. First is a Namli Press Metal. So we maintain our buy and uh, target price slightly lower from 52 cents to 51 cents. We still forecasting the same dividend of 2 cents that will give you a 5.4% yield over uh, last close price of 37 cents. If you look, if you, if you take a glance here, um, Revenue for the nine months is down 2.5%, whereas uh, PADME is actually up 2.2%. So we'll talk a bit about the profit before tax. You can see that profit before tax um, is actually higher and uh, the PBT margin is um, also higher. So this is this is not a gross, gross margin business because uh, commodity swaps are used to hedge uh, cost of raw material and that um, other income will come after the gross profit line. So you need to look at the profit before tax uh, to have a better gauge of the underlying business. Lower revenue was uh, due to lower demand from aluminium building products. Uh, that's in line with the slowdown in the local property market. Uh, it still has a clean balance sheet with a cash hoard. The net cash of uh, 42.5 million is actually 48% of its market cap and net current asset value of uh, 37 cents per share uh, indicates that there's limited downside risk. The business is a mature business and is expected to meet our full year forecast. Uh, this is a boring, uh, boring stock with uh, low volatility. Uh, but it's a yield play because of its ample cash and ability to maintain its uh, two cent dividend. Uh, now we move on to Agent Pay TV. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Paul here. Uh, just a, on the recent second quarter results of Agent Pay TV. Uh, as you can see, um, that's on the first bullet point, uh, revenue and EBITDA were up about 7%. Uh, uh, likewise for operating cash flow, around 8.3%. Um, what you can see from the table is that the, the pet me was down 30%, uh, but that's mainly due to uh, forex, uh, uh, forex losses. Most of it is due to uh, translation losses uh, and does not affect the cash flow. Um, in terms of the dividend, the dividend guidance has been maintained at 6.5 cents for the full year and it's going to be paid quarterly. Uh, this implies an 11% uh, yield. Uh, some of the positives was that uh, the premium cable was rising but uh, there's still a small contributor to revenue. Uh, more important is the cable TV uh, subscribers were stable. Uh, this provides the, the bulk of all the revenue and, and profits for Asian Pay TV. Another interesting thing to note was that uh, in the call they mentioned that they were looking to explore other business opportunities with the new uh, trustee managers. Uh, so we will look forward to some the any for details on on, on this uh, event. 
and from the second half onwards, you will see some two to three million uh, savings uh, from interest, as the new trust as the new trustee owners may ne manage to negotiate for lower interest. Uh, just final two points uh, on the negatives was was that uh, the broadband ARPU, you know, broadband has always been the highest margin, although it's it's really relatively small, but it's it's a larger margin uh, of business. But uh, just that the ARPU has been trending down, and that's also affected because in 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 Taiwan they've launched this unlimited uh, 4G uh, price plans. Uh, one important thing to to always remember is that if you look at that on the table, the free cash flow line. That uh, the 19 million that you see in the second quarter uh, is not sufficient to pay the 23 million of dividends. So this company still re relies on uh, debt to to fund its uh, dividends, uh, and we maintain our buy with a target price of uh, 64 cents. I I'll move on to the next. Uh, oh, Chunky, uh, Linsen. Thank you, Paul. So let's proceed uh, on Oh Chunky. So Old Chunky, um, as you can see, that the top line uh, has um, improved uh, about 11% year on year, uh, mainly driven by the new uh, flavors of uh, power products that they have uh, introduced, as well as uh, new outlets. So uh, year on year basis, uh, they have uh, actually increased uh, four outlets uh, to 89 stores as of uh, first quarter of uh, 2018. So do note that their financial year end in uh, to, uh, in March. However, as you can see that um, the bottom line is uh, actually being dragged uh, by higher operating costs as well as uh, raw material costs. Uh, so raw material costs mainly coming from uh, the prices from uh, chicken as well as uh, seafood, which uh, actually forms a major part of their uh, raw materials. Nonetheless, uh, do note that uh, we are still uh, positive on uh, the uh, integration of uh, the two factory facilities in uh, Woodlands Terrace. And uh, they have just gotten a TOP for the second Woodlands uh, Terrace uh, in the first quarter. And they are on track uh, to complete uh, as well as to commence uh, operation uh, by uh, end of this year. So these new factory facilities uh, should be able to increase capacity to uh, meet the higher um, uh, for them to um, R&D on uh, new uh, products, uh, paths as well as the higher margin uh, products like uh, the Bihun. And uh, it should be able to uh, meet, cater for a higher demand as well as they uh, continue to expand uh, in Singapore as well as uh, in uh, Malaysia. So uh, in near term, uh, we are there are actually five uh, new stores in the pipeline. Uh, all these five new stores are in uh, Singapore. So this should be uh, bringing uh, Old Chunky's uh, total outlet to 92 by end of uh, financial year 2018. So with that, uh, we maintain our buy call on uh, Old Chunky with the same target price of uh, 98 cents. As for QLM Dental, uh, QNM actually uh, announced results uh, last uh, Monday, and uh, we have actually uh, sorry, this is actually upgrade. Uh, we upgraded to neutral call from reduce, uh, but with a lower target price of sixty one cents. Previously it was uh, at sixty five. Um, as you will see from uh, the three core uh, business segment, uh, but now reduced to only two: the clinics as well as the uh, medical. Um, supplies distribution business. So both uh, segments are uh, reduced, uh, sorry, both uh, segments are uh, recorded uh, contraction. And this bring the total revenue to 23% uh, 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 shortfall uh, compared to last year. As you look at the EBITDA level, uh, you can see that uh, it's actually uh, boosted by the non-recurring items, uh, which includes uh, six, over about 70 million um, one-time uh, divestment gain from housing. But these uh, 70 million are being offset by uh, some of the impairments, including impairment in good view, as well as uh, impairment of uh, some assets uh, hold for sale. So this bring uh, 
the one-off uh, gain in second quarter uh, 2017 uh, to about 9.4 million. So if we exclude uh, one-offs from both uh, both periods of uh, second quarter this year and last year, year-on-year uh, -year basis, it actually contracted about 12%. So as we uh, uh, flow all the way down to the bottom line uh, to adjusted penny, uh, it actually gained 29% uh, year on year basis, uh, mainly from the contribution from uh, the associates, which are housing as well as editor. With a one time gain of uh, the, di uh, the divestment of housing, they, uh, they pay out a higher dividends uh, in first half of uh, 2017, uh, but if you compare on a payout ratio basis, uh, it's actually lower than last year's. So moving on, uh, we will be seeing, uh, we actually, sorry, so as of uh, second quarter of 2017, we have uh, seen three new dental clinics open in uh, Singapore. And uh, there are three acquisition deals uh, on the table. So without further ado, uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, the updates of uh, operation in respective uh, countries. So in Singapore, as mentioned just now, they opened two, but consolidated uh, consolidated uh, two into one. So net opening of uh, one dental clinics. But uh, as for um, the inorganic growth uh, side, uh, they actually completed a an acquisition uh, of a Horizon uh, Dental Surgery on uh, 24th July. There's another acquisition deal uh, on Starbite Dental Center. So both these uh, dental clinics are, uh, are providing uh, general as well as uh, specialist uh, dental uh, services. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the uh, consideration for acquisition is amounting to about uh, 350k each um, and uh, do note that uh, they do not have uh, any profit target or profit guarantee for the Singapore um, acquisition deal moving forward. So management shared that uh, without a profit uh, guarantee and profit target, uh, this valuation uh, are actually comparable to uh, the, the amount of KPEX that they are required to set up a brand new uh, dental clinic, uh, which usually will cost about 200 to 300k. Uh, As for the premium uh, paid, uh, because uh, they got uh, the sole proprietor of uh, the clinics uh, to sign about five to six year uh, service agreement with the group. And uh, notwithstanding that, um, the group actually earmarked about uh, 100k each uh, for them to refurbish uh, their clinics uh, because uh, these two clinics have been uh, in operation for about 10 to 20 years. So uh, this 100k will be set aside uh, for them to uh, probably to replace uh, the big ticket items like uh, dental chairs. As for Malaysia side, um, they have incorporated a 50-50 JV in uh, Malacca and another acquisition deal on the table, uh, CS Tan Dental Surgery. So this uh, clinic is also uh, providing general as well as specialist, uh, specialist services. So if you look at the valuation wise, um, it's actually uh, valued at about six times. So uh, if you if you compare to uh, its historical dental clinic acquisition deal, uh, this valuation is actually at the lower end. But um, if you can recall that uh, in the past few quarters, they have been recording impairment loss uh, for uh, dental clinics in the Malaysia side. So we believe that uh, this lower uh, valuation is uh, justifiable given the competitive environment in uh, Malaysia. As for China side, um, there's a, uh, an acquisition of uh, the manufacturing uh, uh, business of 20 sticks, 20% uh, sticks uh, in uh, Superline uh, technology. So this uh, Superline uh, produce or manufacture nickel titanium endothon 
orthodontic uh, root canal valves as well as orthodontic uh, arc wires in China. So given that um, management deemed this as a uh, highly, uh, there's a high uh, potential for uh, global as well as regional growth uh, business, hence they have actually uh, given a valuation of uh, 17 times uh, for the proposed acquisition deal. So if you compare to uh, its uh, historical deals uh, for manufacturing and uh, supplies uh, business in China, it's actually at the higher end. Uh, but as mentioned just now, uh, they deem, as, deem this as a very high potential uh, growth uh, business. Hence, uh, they think that uh, 17 times is uh, justifiable. So without, uh, with this, uh, we upgraded to a neutral call with a slightly lower uh, target price of 61 cents. So moving on, I will pass the presentation to uh, Guangzi on Ezion. Okay, how is Guanzi here? So next we will talk about uh, Ezion. Our title is In Negotiation with Banks and Creditors. Since the stock uh, is suspended trading, uh, we also suspended our rating and the last time price was uh, 19.7 cents. So uh, firstly, uh, let's take a look at the results. We can see here the weak performance in the first half of this year was mainly due to the reduction in charter rate as well as the drop in utilization rate of the, of the existing uh, fleets. And also uh, there was and unrealized uh, FX losses uh, due to the uh, weakening uh, of USD. So the business-wise, uh, as of uh, June this year, uh, the total fleet size was uh, reported at 26. However, there was only uh, 14 vessels under operation. Uh, the management mentioned that the current charter rate uh, was not tenable for ongoing uh, operation uh, and they expect that uh, there will be five to six more vessels uh, into services uh, by next year provided that uh, the group can get through the negotiation with the banks and creditor uh, moving on. So right at this moment, Ezion Group uh, is facing uh, several dilemmas. Uh, the first one was the liquidity crunch uh, about the uh, cash on hand. So uh, right now, the group still needs cash to fund the uh, upgrading and modification projects for the uh, existing flex. However, uh, they need they still need to pay the interest as well as the um, loans to the banks and the bondholders. And also, uh, the other dilemma is that uh, the banks they are not uh, they are unsatisf and unsatisfied with the um, current payment terms because the group at this moment was paying the cash to the bondholders. Um, that means they prioritize the um, creditors uh, over the banks. So in other words, uh, that means the the related banks they are they are subsidizing they are subsidizing the bondholders at this moment. That's why they um, suspended the trading and will talk to the banks uh, on last Friday. So the management mentioned that um, the ongoing support from banks uh, must be uh, unanimous. That means all those uh, five to six banks must 
agree on the payment terms moving forward so that they can support the group's uh, operation. Uh, however, um, at this point of time, uh, some bank loans are backed by some well-performing uh, projects, while others not, are not. That's why uh, we expect that there will be uh, several rounds of uh, negotiation, negotiation with the banks uh, moving forward. So here is the table shows that um, Eastern Group is facing a huge uh, funding gap. You can see here as of um, June this year, the group uh, will have total uh, 374 million US dollars of funding gap. So uh, one point we must, we must know that uh, at this juncture, uh, Ezeon Group didn't trigger any default on its uh, existing loans. So the next uh, is CMC Goldman Holdings Limited. Uh, we expect a turnaround next year. So we uh, downgrade our rating to uh, from buy to neutral with a lower target price of uh, 29 cents and the last time price was uh, 27 cents. So you can take a look at the results here. The weak performance was mainly due to the lower all grade issue. So, in, so um, in order to solve these e uh, issues, uh, the group has been uh, constructing the carbon enriched plants, uh, CL, CIL plant, to uh, improve the recovery rate of the ore. So as you can see here, the recovery rate will be up to 95% uh, compared to the existing uh, leaching uh, process. The heap leach, uh, whose uh, recovery rate was only 65%. Uh, and it, it is expected that uh, the newly at uh, capacity will be 150 k tons to 180 k tons. Uh, however, uh, the plan will only be expected to complete the construction in mid-November. That means uh, the best scenario will be uh, there. There is a uh, one and a half month of the trial run of this uh, CIL plant. So in the second quarter, uh, the group continue to explore for the Polite and Calgo project. So the outlook for the remaining of this year is that uh, we think the lower all grade situation will continue until uh, the trial run of the CIL plant. So we think that this year's performance uh, is, uh, is very weak. So we expect that the CIL plan can uh, improve the performance next year. Thank you.
Hi, there's a question on cash logistics trust. First of all, if the buyover for its sponsor, uh, what are good things available for cash? Um, first of all, Wofa will still remain intact, uh, but good things are probably um, an enlarged uh, Wofa portfolio. Um, however, as uh, I've outlined several times, cash, uh, the gearing is uh, quite high now, so there's uh, quite a um, not much of a positive outlook in terms of a DPU dilution going forward because any more acquisition will need to um, tap the capital markets again and probably will uh, result in uh, issuing of more units and there will be dilution. Uh, again, on cash, uh, there's a question about the commodity hub master lease. Uh, how much of the DP will be affected from here? Okay, um, there's no way to give you a number on how much is the DP going to be affected, but one thing is um, for the master lease at Commodity Hub, uh, some of the risk is mitigated because um, there's actually an underlying uh, agreement, there's an agreement with the underlying tenants. So in the event that um, the master lease does not get renewed uh, by CWT, uh, the, the leases kind of like automatically gets uh, novated over directly to um, cash. So the thing is that although there's a, a master lease with CWT, but actually some of the leases the underlying tenants have leases which extend beyond the master lease uh, a period. So, so there's actually an agreement uh, that, as I said, to if the master lease is um, does not get renewed, automatically the un all the underlying tenants will uh, be direct tenants to um, uh, cash. Okay, so there's another question on Sabana Reed uh, that is a trading buy, but 22% of NLA. What what is about the 22% NLA master lease going to expire? Yes. So as I explained, this is a special situation where you're primarily buying. Uh, for um, the acquisition of the assets. So in the meantime, there's a 7% yield, uh, but the risk is these uh, master leases that are expiring. So the yield might, um, might not be sustainable, but that's not the main uh, reason for buying uh, Sabana. That's the main reason is uh, a bottom-up play uh, on a consolidation and get a, a buyout offer.
Okay, there's another question on cash again. Uh, if cash does make acquisition, they can issue perps or bond. Not necessarily by issuing more units or taking on more debt. Bond is debt. There's no difference. For perps, yes, perps uh, will be considered as uh, equity, but then you also will have to pay out the perp holder before the unit holders will get their share of the cash flow. Uh, as a reminder, we currently have a whole uh, neutral on cash and we are still recommending to buy um, Maple Tree Industrial and Ascender Street. Hi, uh, th this is uh, Paul here. Uh, we have a, a question on APTV. Uh, since Asian Pay TV is paying dividends out of debt, do we still have a buy call? Uh, yes, uh, we still have a buy call. I think uh, uh, this is can is still uh, the, uh, this is still sustainable. The the dividend is uh, at eleven percent. Uh, the creep up in in debt is very, it's incremental. Uh, you're not going to see any um, major uh, spike or major spike, um, and that that is why the company is still that's why the yields are still attractive at uh, 11 percent. Uh, like like all trusts or even REITs, uh, it, uh, the ability it's crucial that they all that all these entities. Uh, be able to roll over their debts, uh, but uh, uh, but just just to reiterate, this this is just a creep up in debt levels. It's not a, su a sudden spike. Thanks. Hi, uh, this is uh, Richard again. So I just want to clarify again on cash and as well as debt level. So if you look at cash, they had a uh, um, they had raised new equity. I think in the late part of 2015 or late part of 2014, and that uh, caused the DPU uh, to plunge for one year. If you compare with the other two uh, REITs that we are currently having uh, accumulate on, that's uh, Maple Tree Industrial and Ascenders. You can see that uh, for Maple Tree, it has not done any uh, uh, rights issue or anything uh, in in at least the last two or three years. But uh, DPU has still been able to grow. Uh, the portfolio is big enough such that 
the manager has been able to selectively uh, divest properties and reinvest um, the capital into uh, either build to suit project or new property. Likewise, for uh, ascenders, we will see that in the last two or three years, there's no rights issue. And even with um, them doing their, uh, I think they had some uh, uh, placement and they also issue uh, consideration units to the sponsor when they acquire some of the large properties like uh, one at Chang uh, Chang Changi and uh, the recent um, uh, Science Park properties at Science Park 1, that's uh, I think 12, 14, 16 Science Park Drive. They also issue uh, units to the, the, the sponsor but even with all these uh, new units being issued, uh, there's, there was no uh, uh, dip in the DPU. You can see that the DPU the DPU track record has been able to grow. So the point that I'm trying to make is that if you want sustainable DPU, you have to uh, uh, look out for this um, gearing level and how well the manager manages the portfolio and able to um, rebalance the portfolio uh, strategically. So to, to add on, if you, if you look at uh, Ascender Street and Maple Tree Industrial, they've actually been able to grow the portfolio and uh, and grow the DPU even without um, tapping uh, the capital markets by having rights issue or large dilutive placements. So portfolio is growing yet uh, the minority unit holders are still enjoying year-on-year -year growth in DPU. So that's uh, one thing that you have to look at and take note of. Okay, since there are no more questions, uh, we'll end the webinar here. Uh, so thanks for attending and uh, see you again next week. Bye.